Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Infinite Lagrange. Today's video is going to be another blueprint breakdown, having a look at one of the units in Infinite Lagrange and talking about what makes it special, what makes it tick and why you might want to use it in your fleets. And today's video is a little bit of a special one because we're going to be taking a look at the brand new fighter, Hyradin's Loyal and talking about how these ships work, are they any good, are they worth adding to your fleet. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, if you do want to go the extra mile to help keep me doing what I do, you can head across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie and pledge your support there. With all that said and done then, let's jump straight in to the blueprint, which is of course under Fighter. This is a brand new blueprint, it has been added to the game within the last month, I've just managed to get myself a blueprint copy of this, and from what I can gather, it is available in all servers, including in your first server. It does not have the RE restriction like other blueprints do, like for example the Jaeger or the Quawa. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look at Hyradin's Loyal. Its basic type is the special type known as a Pulsar Fighter. And before we go any further, can I just say how absolutely stonking beautiful this thing is? I adore the design of this, that sort of cross shape with all of the additional trimmings around there. It is just such a cool looking ship. Like when they teased this one in the recent event and you saw a whole squadron of these sort of doing a flight formation, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to unlock these and have some fun with them. It is just such an awesome looking ship. Probably one of my favorite ship designs actually in Infinite Lagrange, especially amongst the fighters. I mean, if we go back and have a look, what other fighters really are there to compete with that? I kind of like the Newland. I kind of like the Stingray and sort of like the Strix. The Strix looks a little bit like a Faisar, uh, like race, uh, race vehicle from the Wipeout series. But yeah, anyway, Hyrodin's Loyal, really cool looking ship. And let's have a look at its roles. So, a special Hyrodin clan fighter equipped with two charged pulse cannons that can continuously strike enemy targets at close range. Meanwhile, it is also equipped with unique composite armor and an enhanced vector engine to ensure its survivability on the battlefield. Its roles are against ships, using energy weapons, and high evasion. Kind of what you'd expect, this kind of thing, really. Fighter, an aircraft unit capable of attacking ships in their system. It is a medium fighter as well, so if it can launch fighter aircraft, it can launch these, which means you can put it in some of your early destroyers, like the Tundra or the Ceres. You can launch it from some of your cruisers and everything above that, really. It's a really versatile fighter that you can get nice and early. And ultimately, I haven't even fully upgraded this yet. A second I upgrade, a second I got it and unlocked it, I immediately pumped as many EXP chips into it as possible. You can see I've got the full 50 there. I haven't actually had chance to, it hasn't leveled up since then, because of course it's basically a level 50 blueprint now and it takes a ton of experience to do. But even though it's not fully upgraded, it's already outperforming several of my fighters that are already fully upgrade and golden blueprints. So that kind Kind of should be the spoiler alert for the rest of this video, but let's do a deep dive. First of all, it's combat roles. We have an S on anti-ship capability, and oh boy, they are not kidding with this thing. This packs a fearsome punch, as we'll talk about later, but it also gets A on anti-aircraft and on siege, believe it or not. As far as aircraft go, this thing is powerful. Its survivability isn't quite as good as some other aircraft out there, but it doesn't really need to be, because a full flight of these does so much damage that not much really survives. It's also a C on strategic capability. It is, for an aircraft, quite expensive to build. It uses a fair amount of resources. Now, they fly in squadrons of three, so you can basically all the stats that we're going to be looking at multiply out by three for the full squadron. Now, looking at its firepower then, first of all, this starts at 6,000. I've managed to enhance it already by an additional 1320, 7,320 anti-ship firepower, a air defense there of 3099, and basic siege of 1521. They're not kidding when they call this an S rank with some serious firepower. Its armor, again an HP, are for a fighter, actually not terrible. 5940 for its armor there, um, for its HP, sorry, with three basic armor. It is very fast. Cruising speed there of 3000. Yeah, it, 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 it's a fighter. What do you expect? It's a fighter. 
Let's start then by having a look at the propulsion system. First off, if we have a look here, you can see we've got a 25% basic evasion, which means this thing is already pretty tough to hit. That is a key selling point already for Hyrodin's Loyal. Um, very high evasion, very, very tough to hit early on. And you can then up that even further using its enhancements, aerial mobility enhancement and dynamic thruster adjustment to increase that evasion even more. You then have the ability to reduce the chance of being hit by missiles and the reduced target selection time of the aircraft's primary weapon. Now frankly here I would be going for those evasion ones first off, followed by the reduced chance of being hit by missiles just so you have a incredibly tough to hit fighter that is going to deal some significant firepower. Ultimately the intensified combustion enhancement is still pretty useful, that reducing the target selection time by 6%, 30% there at full training is really quite useful, it means that it takes less time for them to start shooting at things and thus they deal more damage. If you're not really going up against missile fleets you could probably do with, away with the missile evasion enhancement and go straight for the intensified combustion. You do have three slots to go with so for me I would personally be going for both of the evasion and then either the missile evasion or the intensified combustion depending on what you anticipate facing. Of course, propulsion only tells half the story. We do have an armor system as well. We've already had a look at its stats. 5% energy shield is pretty pathetic, let's be fair. But the idea is you're not really being hit. And again, in here, you've got mainly your increased ship HP. I wouldn't bother all that much. You do have the increased enemy weapon lock-on time, which is amazing. And a low reflection coating. Again, reducing the chance of being hit by a further whopping 15% there on top of your evasion. Um, that you'll have on the ship already. This makes this incredibly survivable for a target like this. It's small, it's fast, it's ludicrously hard to hit. Who cares if you don't stack up the HP right? Same with the aircraft stealth coating here. That increasing the enemy lock-on time means it takes longer for them to lock you down, at which point you've already completed your combat run and you're heading back to uh, whichever carrier you have launched this from for refueling and going into RTB. So this is so useful because it just reduces the amount of time that the enemy is shooting at you whilst you've already got all of these ridiculous evasion sort of survival traits to just avoid being hit. Limited time shooting at you, very hard to hit, and then you just come back to the series or whatever, and if it's a series, oh look, it's healing up your fighters. That's pretty awesome, right? Now, that would already be pretty scary. The fact that this thing is incredibly hard to hit um, is just already pretty fun, but the weapons themselves are just insanely good. Now, if we go into the enhancements, it's standard enhancement blueprints here um, for any fighter or aircraft, which if you're like me, you have hundreds of those sitting around. It's really easy to get that max 30% very, very quickly. It just uses three blueprints at a time, which is slightly more than average, but not so much that you'll probably find yourself running out of blueprints for it. It's very quick and easy to upgrade. Then the actual weapons themselves, if we look at it, it's an energy weapon, which means it ignores armor. It is resisted by shields and shields tend to be a lot lower on most ships, especially if you're going up against Noma fleets. It's like, oh yeah, you've got really thick armor. Shame if I was using energy weapons and just completely ignoring it, right? And whilst the prioritized target is aircraft going mainly after corvettes, it then starts prioritizing carriers and cruisers, which is a really interesting attack priority list. Because going after corvettes, this thing will hit them hard and fast and just rip them out of the sky quickly. This feels kind of like the anti-T-800, um, and it does seem to do really well against most corvettes out there, including other anti-aircraft ones. I haven't had a chance to face this up against a T-800 fleet yet, but I'm kind of thinking that this would actually win due to the evasion and the sheer firepower that it can put out. By then going for carriers and cruisers after, you kind of avoid some of the more heavily armoured things like some of your battle cruisers and just go straight for the soft squishy targets. Carriers tend to be heavily armoured, not heavily shielded, and cruisers, again, unless you're really going up against, say, Jupiter Industries, this just absolutely wrecks through them. A lot of people are using things like Casso 66 or even the Chimera heavy armoured cruisers as their front liners, which are armour tanks. They take a lot, you know, they... It, this cuts straight through that armor. It ignores the fact that those targets even have armor and just deals damage straight away to them, which is just awesome. 
We then have active aerial defense, which means yes, you can lock onto any aerial targets on the battlefield. That does include fighters as well, but it will prioritize corvettes, carriers, and cruisers first. Once there are no corvettes, carriers, or cruisers, it will kind of go for anything and everything. It does seem, from anecdotal evidence, to go after fighters as a priority after that, but it's not on the list here, so I'd kind of take that with a pinch of salt. Now let's look at the enhancements, because there are some pretty dopey ones on here. First of all, the Charged Phase Strike. Oh boy. Charged Pulse Weapons damage increases by 12% for every two consecutive rounds it attacks the same target, up to 24%. This bonus is reset after switching targets. Charged Pulse Weapons can undergo phase modulation periodically to increase the joint damage output of multiple sets of weapons. Basically, as long as this thing keeps shooting at the same target, that already considerable DPM goes up by 24%. 24% on 7,000 already, multiplied out across three fighters, is a bucket ton of damage that makes this utterly terrifying. Straight away, lock that one down, get right in there, and off we go. Now, there are a lot of increased pulse damage here as well. Straight up increase of damage. I cannot wonder what this ultimately maxes out at if you were to train all of these. I haven't been able to yet, as I said, but the fact that I've only got two of these trained and it's already sitting all the way up at like 7,400, the fact that we've then got another load of pulse cannon damage there is just going to be even more. We then have the system cooldown and firing duration later on as well, which means it's going to be firing faster and more frequently. Between these, between the heat sink efficiency and the two rapid firing and effective fires, I would be going for the ones that reduce the firing duration because it does more damage in a shorter period of time and then starts firing again. Very, very useful. We also have an increase all pulse cannon hit rate. If you're using this primarily to go against other corvettes, that's probably a good one to go for, but don't forget it also has the possibility to do 50% crit damage. Oh boy, like, I just cannot really overstate how scary this thing is. The sheer amount of damage that it can kick out. Remember, the numbers that we're looking at here do not include that 12 to 24% boost it gets there from charged phase strike. Then it's also got 50% crit damage on top of that. The damage this thing does is just absolutely berserk. Ultimately, this is one of those videos that I just want to say, you know, I, I come into this kind of saying to you all, I'm going to talk about this and whether or not I recommend it. This is just flat out S tier. If you have a Hyrodin's loyal blueprint, build it, use it. It is good against pretty much everything. I cannot think of any point in history, like any of the other uh, fighters, I would rather build than this. As far as I'm concerned, this just eats spores. This eats Newland. It, it, it's everything that you ever wanted in a fighter. Incredible damage, incredible evasion. It's just slightly more costly than some of the others. Like, oh no. Which means for Hyrodin's first ever blueprint, because this is a brand new faction in Infinite Lagrange, this ship is not generic, it's not Antonius Consortium, it's not Noma, it's not Jupiter's. It is Hyrodin, a brand new faction. Hopefully we'll be getting some more ships like this. I do honestly anticipate this ship getting a nerf, because it just feels ridiculous. It genuinely feels ridiculous that a, like, a ship that doesn't have upgrades is already out DPMing some of the ships that I have fully upgraded to like blueprint level 100 and beyond. So it's, it's just berserk, genuinely berserk. As for how to build it, I think the first thing I would ever be going for is getting that charged face strike in there. Once that charged face strikes in, I would then probably come back and get those propulsion systems done, um, going for the evasion, the two evasion ones first of all, and then your choice of the secondary depending on what you're up against. Armor systems, yeah, it is probably worth going on and getting that aircraft stealth coating or the low reflection coating fairly early on as well, just to up that survivability. After which, yeah, come back into that Star Chaser Pulse Cannon and just go ballistic with the crit damage and then just straight up damage beyond that. Push this thing as far as it can go and let me know how you get on with it. Seriously, this is just such a cool ship. I can't wait to see how some people are using this, getting on with it and just finding it in game. If you've got it already, if you're using it, let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got a particular ship or blueprint you think you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know that down there as well. If you've enjoyed this video,
video, hit like if you found it useful, drop a subscribe, and keep an eye out for more Infinite Lagrange right here on this channel. There's a whole playlist on my main page. You can check through those, see some other blueprint breakdowns, and find out some more cool info about one of the coolest 4X games on mobile. Anyway, folks, that's all for me today. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange!